There really is nothing like going for a motorbike ride on a nice sunny afternoon, hitting everyone else on your bike as you pass and hope to not get hit by a police car. That about sums up Road Rash as a series, and the second game is more of the same. You race other motorbikes down what feels like the longest road ever, avoiding smashing into cars and other objects, getting attacked by the police, and being hit by passing racers. Getting to first place is difficult, but staying there is even harder. One wrong move and you will go flying off your bike and have to run all the way back to it, which loses you many places. Hit an opponent enough times and their race is done, but the same goes for you too. The actual racing part of the game isn't really anything special, but being able to hit other racers is what sets this game apart from standard racing games, especially when weapons are brought into the mix. A fun time. We'll play again. We've had some action RPGs, a proper turn-based JRPG, now for something different, a tactical RPG. 1,000 years ago, the Lord of Darkness was defeated, but vowed to return 1,000 years later. I think you can probably figure out where the game goes from here. You are a young rookie soldier, and for some reason, you are the one tasked with putting together a team known as the Shining Force to defeat the returning evil. They tease you actually being able to recruit your own team, but as soon as you leave the castle, a bunch of random people show up and claim they are now on your team. Magical. With the Shining Force assembled, you venture to some old building and find goblins, and so begins the first fight. Being a tactical RPG, you have to move characters within a defined space, hoping to get close enough to engage in a battle, which happens automatically. Visually, it all looks fantastic, but I'm just not engaged in the slightest thanks to the combat system. Turn-based or nothing. Won't play again. Everyone who grew up in the 90s wanted to be a ninja at some point, so games like Ninja Gaiden and Shinobi definitely had a place in the gaming market. Shinobi 3 takes all the fun from the previous games and improves on things. Combat is much more fun, the difficulty has been turned down a notch, and you have new moves like being able to scale walls. Never a dull moment to be found here. Visually, I adore how this game looks, even just from the first couple of levels. The second level is set in a cave with waterfalls in the background, and it all just looks stunning. You really can't go wrong with any Shinobi game on the Mega Drive, but this one might very well be the best. We'll play again. Okay, firstly, I know, going alphabetically, Space Harrier 2 should be in the next video. But I wanted to keep all of the Sonic games together in a single video rather than splitting them up. So with that out of the way, let's talk about Space Harrier 2. It's a 3D-ish on-rails shooter game that honestly is garbage. It looks horrible with the checkerboard floor that takes up half the screen and the other half is usually taken up with a basic two-colour sky. Gameplay is just as lame too. All you do is move up, down, left and right on the screen while holding down the shoot button, hoping to hit everything in front of you and avoid projectiles coming your way that you can often still be hit by because of the strange hit detection and view, which shouldn't be strange because it's straight in front of you, but they still managed to make it weird. Maybe this looked impressive in 1988 when it first released in Japan, but in 2022 it's horrible. Won't play again. 